What up, what up, what up, guys? How's it going? Welcome to the VOD Watchers. How's it going? How's it going? Ah, let's play some Warcraft. Let me turn the lights on. Let's go. Yeah, what's up, uh, VOD Watchers? This is a live stream on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on the VOD, of course, by now, it's uh, not live anymore. But the title will still say live so that you know that it was a live stream. And welcome to who is going to be the first in the chat. It's Lonico. What up, Lonico? How's it going? Kwang, Nguyen, uh, Tat SX, Andrew, Jesse, MTG. What's up, guys? Let me go ahead and send a, a tweet out into the Twitter verse that we are live. Yo, what up, Skylar Thompson, Dekido, Guy on Gorthok, Carl Butler. Marian Stoikov, Martin Mitrovich. Hey, Samuel here. Doing my new mod work. Discord ping right now. <laughs> That's you. Darkest Demon. All right. Aju is a moderator here, too. Uh, reminder to everyone to turn on live chat, not just top chat. At the top of your chat screen, there's a button live chat, top chat. Uh, you want to have live chat. It's better. Are you still playing Dota? Yes, sir. I have a YouTube channel called at Grubby Place. At Grubby Place. You can find it on my main YouTube homepage. I have links to it everywhere on all of my socials. Uh, that's where I upload Dota 2. But mostly I stream it live on Twitch. And in fact, this is going to be uh, a so short and sweet YouTube stream. And in like an hour or two, I'm going to stream on Twitch. And uh, I'll be playing Dota 2 as well there. Do you know whether Warcraft is going to be on sale again? I missed the opportunity. It's full price again. I don't know. But they still have an open refund policy as far as I know. So <laughs> you can still try it. Oh, wow. Cool, Giovanni Rodriguez. Why have I been summoned? How many people are here? Are these streams performing okay? Yep. Happy with the YouTube streams, Jay Gaynor. Who dare summon me? Is that the uh, Dreadlord voice line? Live on YouTube with some Warcraft 3 good deeds. Let's go. So are you suggesting we buy it, play for some hours, then refund? I'm saying some people have done it. I don't know about suggesting it. If you enjoy it, you don't need to refund. The game is still kind of broken on a client level, so that's not amazing. But uh, obviously, the game is very good. Warcraft 3 is very good. You brought me back? What's our first good deed of the day? Uh, I'm going to play a couple of 2v2 games with uh, a friend. And then I'll start some uh, 1v1 good deeds. I don't think most people realize how tall you are. 187 cm is very tall. Evelyn, it's only 1 or 2 cm over the average in the Netherlands. The average Dutch male is 185 cm tall. So, I am slightly above average in the Netherlands. But when I was visiting China and I was on the Great Wall, <laughs> I could see over everyone. Even though it was very busy. In the Netherlands being the... Yeah, the Netherlands is the tallest country in the world. I mean, not for the, not for the land, but... Yeah, I stood on the wall, the rest wasn't, that's why. As requested, here I am. Good, good, good. Christian Albert, what up? Hey, Matthias Pizarro, how you doing? Grubby, are micro that important in ranked versus? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I think ranked is quite important.
Hey, Grubby, question, yeah? Are, uh, for the new players, are your bloody beginner guides still relevant or has the meta changed? Uh, I'd say the meta has changed. In fact, I just recorded a new bloody beginner guide. Let me go ahead and check when it is uploading, okay? Uh, I did a new orc bloody beginner guide. I think it's really good. It's going to be uploaded soon, but not yet. Yeah, not yet. So uh, probably in a week or so. My YouTube editor is on vacation, but he scheduled everything to be uploaded in the next couple of days. What are the medals? Oh, the medals. Uh, they're for Warcraft 3 and SE2. <laughs> Not for sports. God, no. Warcraft and Starcraft events. Esports. So if you guys like the orc guide, share it with your friends, like it, leave comment and stuff. If it does well, I'm going to do more guides. Uh, if it kind of falls under the radar, then I'll just do like good deeds and stuff. My weight, my weight is 74 kilos. Want to know my foot size? I'd love for you to make a video showing your mouse and keyboard. Oh, uh, I have one. Grubby hand cam. And let me share it with you. Here it is. You see the link in chat? That's me with the keyboard camera. What was your last regular civilian job? Ah, civilian job. As opposed to now when I'm a superhero. Um, I had a gaming blog for a newspaper. And before that, I had a hardware store summer job. And before that, I had a newspaper job. And then I became a superhero. Hey guys, what's better, Dodo or League of Legends? I think Dota is better, but League is more popular. Who's your ally? Oh, he's a friend uh, named Khalid. He's also a, a big uh, stream supporter. Uh, playing some 2v2. Nice way to start the stream relaxed while talking to you guys. Cool video with Sky. Yeah, was nice uh, that he came to visit. Happy surprise. So you can actually support yourself from streaming and such. That's impressive. It's very hard to make it, but I've been very lucky that uh, I had a chance to become a pro gamer in Warcraft 3, which then helped to give recognition and which helped people to find me on YouTube and on Twitch. And it's been my career for uh, quite some time now, yes. Let's go Tarn Chieftain. Tarn Chieftain is super cool. I love TC first. Yeah, exactly, the only cage. I lost 20 FFA games, but they were all counted as a win. What's wrong with the Bnet? Was not sad enough. Yeah. Yeah, Bnet is pretty broken. You have to play for fun, not for achievements. If you want to play for achievements, you, you go play some uh, gacha RPG, right? For Warcraft 3, they took away normal scorekeeping. <laughs> because it's broken, the result counting. Hey, Grubby, what's up, man? Yo, what's up, Christian? Did you enjoy the Nerubian race? I think it's so well made. Uh, can't see, Jukwis. The Nerubian race. It's so fun that someone made that and they made it so well. Why in Forum 4 games I'm getting levers even in ranked? Some guys leave instantly. Well, because, like, because the results ke keeping is not working very well at all i think people don't care like they've already learned that stats aren't gonna get counted well anyway by blizzard so they figure if some people they're just not very like happy or something and they just deliberately go into a four and four and leave it gives them a sense of control that they are lacking in their real life by trolling seven other people they're trying to say i may not be able to control having a better life but I can control how you feel, and you now feel a little worse than before, and I did that, and that means that I have power. So this is like the, the power of trolling to them. 
They leave right at the start. Alternatively, it may not be malicious. What could instead be happening is that they actually just had a bug. They crashed, which actually happens relatively frequently in Warcraft 3. Yeah, they just crashed. So then, uh, yeah, they left during the loading screen. Why do so many people leave tomes after creeping? I always wondered why. Uh, Warcraft 3 is a game, it's not like the most demanding for multitask. Maybe Starcraft is more demanding, but it's still more demanding than most games. And not everyone is a pro. And even pros, they always have something else to worry about, like manage your economy and whatnot, think about going to the next creep camp. And because the game doesn't do a good job of saying which creep is going to drop an item, it's pretty common for you to forget that there was a tome in a certain camp. And then you just end up going to like the next place without fully considering that uh, there's still going to be a tome. So yeah, then they leave it. And part of the reason that viewers always notice this is because viewers don't have to do the rest of the management. You're essentially watching television as a viewer. So it's easy to see when they make a mistake like forgetting at home. Most viewers don't watch their own replays. So it is quite likely that viewers are not aware when they are making the mistake themselves. So they end up thinking that they are better at picking up tomes than the average player. Because they see like, oh, this guy forgot Tome, this guy forgot Tome, this guy forgot Tome. But then when they're playing, they forget Tome too, but they don't know because they don't watch their own replay. Of course, there might be players that are not mechanically extremely good, but they never forget a Tome. But I almost guarantee you that even though they never forget a Tome, they spend too much time at a creep camp after finishing a creep camp. They stand there watching, scouting for Tomes and whatnot. And then there's probably going to be a couple of players that are very fast at leaving the camp, know exactly which creep has the tome, and never get it, never forget it. They never forget it, and and they're just really good at it. It's totally possible for that to be the case. And if that's the case, I commend you. YouTube says Grubby requested my presence, yeah. <laughs> Dear Grubby, please release Sky from your basement. No, he's no noob. How important do you think it is to have a high spec mouse and keyboard versus a standard office mouse and keyboard? So what I can say about mouse and keyboard is that it's very personal. Take for instance DPI. DPI is a really big advertisement for manufacturers. If you work for the marketing department of a manufacturer, what is important is that you always try to have a unique selling point, which makes it interesting for people to purchase your thing. So they'll say like, oh, 6,000 DPI. But what DPI really is, is just the, sp the amount of pixels you move on a mouse pad translated to the amount of pixels that your on-screen cursor will move. So let's say for instance, fictional unit i move my mouse 50 fictional units and the result is that it moves uh, 1000 pixels on screen then if you double dpi your 50 fictional units would move 2000 pixels on screen so double dpi is also a more accurate reading essentially of your sensor of the mouse so it's uh, it's good to have more accuracy but and when you double the DPI, it's not just more accurate. They both use the worker attack strap. So when you double DPI, you're twice as accurate, but it's also not really necessary usually to be that accurate. Yo, thank you, Jerka. I appreciate it. Nice. 
No one ever asked for my presence. Thanks, Grub. <laughs> Hi. You're high quality goods, Akima. Hey, Agent Null, thank you. Agent Null 11 became a member. So, uh, when it comes to mouse, I would say you want a certain minimum amount of DPI, but you don't need a lot. Yo, thanks, Jirka, Jirka. And Agent Null. So, for instance, I'm using 1200 DPI, and I think that's enough. If you go to like 200 DPI, you most likely don't have enough accuracy in your sensor reading. But if you go to 6000 DPI, it'll be very accurate. But as a side effect, your mouse is going to move very rapidly on the screen. So in order to compensate for the 6000 DPI, you're going to have to take another value like the driver sensitivity of your mouse or the window sensitivity. And you're going to have to crank it all the way down. It's like taking a one gigabyte megapixel photo with an extremely expensive camera, but only needing a, a picture that's about this big. It's just overkill. Yeah, sub to the gut. Great, Liberty. So I think we're against complete beginners. So we're very, uh, we're very narrowly winning against two people that just made workers. <laughs> The greedy king, he's called. GG. Watching your videos made me get into Warcraft 3 again. I also started being active in the modding community. Oh, cool. Ultra Joker. Now, let's say when it comes to keyboard, yeah? Like your, uh, your keyboard. I'm using a DOS keyboard, which I just discovered today are uh, designed in Austin, Texas. And this one was uh, manufactured in Taiwan. And this, the keyboard that I have is Model S. It's from 2011. Still works. Have had it for 12 years, still works. It's got blue switches. I've actually taken out the numlock key and I could also take down the Windows key, but I don't, uh, I don't misclick Windows key typically, so it's fine. I think it's important to have a robust mouse and keyboard. There are some really popular brands of mouse and keyboard that come out with great design in terms of looks. They do great marketing. The shape is good, but the durability is lacking. So after a year, suddenly you notice that your left click of the mouse is broken, even though you do not abuse the equipment. I think that's kind of a pity. So how important is good equipment? It is important. Durability, shape, form factor, utility. I like a mouse with few buttons, but a World of Warcraft player will need a mouse with more buttons. You have icons showing what units and how many you bound to control digits. What plugin is that? I want it as well. Yeah, that's called W3 Booster. And there's a free service and there's a paid service. Paid service gives more info. It's really nice, isn't it? Kef Mode says, hey Grubby, I rarely get to see your live stream, but I watch every video on your channel when I have time. I really appreciate the 1440p quality too, been killing it lately. Yo, cheers, dude. The, uh, the 1440 quality was a switch that I made in my process, my editor and I. It's a little bit more effort, and at first I wasn't sure if it's worth it, but got a lot of positive feedback. So now... There's a few more steps to get the material to you guys because before we would export it from Twitch and now I'm recording it locally and then I send it to my editor for processing and uh, it's a bit more step but I think it's really worth it because when I watch back my own videos on uh, on the smart TV you can really tell if it's 1440p or 1080p no heel challenge don't think I have Jerka Grubby, I want to say you're a good dude. I watch your Warcraft 3 replays every day. Really enjoy them. Not just because you're a great player, but because you're a great person. Cheers, mate. Thank you, AJG942. You are the second AJG I know. AJG942, I know an AJG88. Also a good dude. I'm sure you are too. Oh, thank you. He killed the sheep for me. Is HyperX a durable keyboard brand? 
I have very little experience with HyperX, uh, Jeru. We're gonna get, we're gonna surround him. Place your bets. Are we going to succeed in the surround? Bet now. Oh. No? No. Okay. You could tell, right? He was too agile. Oh, that was close. It's two of them! Khalid, help! That's a lot of archers. Noted, he says, and he doesn't come. Oh. He believes in me. He believes I can 1v2. I should build a shop. <laughs> Let's just... Uh, can you spread the picnic mat? Spread the picnic mat. We're staying. Denied XP. Uh oh. He has a glaive thrower. That's a lot of glaive throwers, man. Calm down, Jesus. <laughs> All right, we'll just do a little bit of light harass. Nothing too serious, right? We're not committed. Khalid's gonna carry. Kirby, do you enjoy testing your skill with creative challenges? The YouTube games have been so awesome to watch. It's cool to see somebody can make those challenges possible. Yeah, I enjoy it a lot. Because I've done a lot of different strats in Warcraft, right? So I want to try different things. Things I've never done before. It gives me a lot of pleasure. Birds pooped on my car, so I went through a car wash. Checked a few days later, they did it again. Well, you gotta stop. You gotta stop parking your car under a tree. Sounds like. Yeah, it's really good, Robert Stanishev. Oh, almost lost the goal. Insufficient mana. My might cannot be matched. 
I've noticed birds poop only on certain cards. Makes me think the birds know you're a bad person. So the European magpie and crows and ravens, they can actually tell the difference between different people. So it's very possible that that's the case. That they know that you are like a, not a bird fan. Nope. Oh, I'm dead. Help. I need help, Khalid. Can you TP here? Do you have TP? Yeah, TP or I'm dead. I can use the... <laughs> what the... No, for real. I'm not joking around no more. Alright, just put some snakes. We got this. No base. Yeah. Jeez. He had me going there for a bit. I just realized I'm sub to you on 53 accounts. Wait, hold on a second here, bro. Why have we got 53 accounts? Is there any reason for this? Lol. Ah. Okay, are we cool? Okay, I'm gonna rash some worms. Actually, worms would be awful now. That's an oft-requested strategy, XOXXW, that I never do. Telling my opponent every step what I'm gonna do. I understand the attraction behind the strategy, but I'm not doing it. Because... I find the process of telling my opponent everything I'm gonna do. While it is interesting from our side, it can feel a little bad-mannered towards the opponent. Because... It takes away the illusion that anything could be going on. They become very aware that I'm like styling or something on them. It's uh, it's not that comfortable. It's pretty easy to feel like it's too personal and becomes awkward. I can tell one guy to do one thing on 53 accounts. And because 53 people telling... <laughs> Because 53 people say the same thing, the guy does it. <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh my god, you've you've opened my eyes. <laughs> okay. So I have uh, I have a thing where I don't get one guy. So let's say if someone says like Gorby, I think you should play more 3v3 or 2v2, right? I typically think it's valid feedback, but unless like a lot of other people say it, I tend not to do it anyway, because, well, you shouldn't get one guide. I used to get one guide by anybody. And the result was that I would do whatever the one guy said, but then it was actually not serving the greater good because other people didn't want it. But if 53 people told me something indifferent, Tasteful organic ways like hell. Yeah, I probably would uh, consider it The dam stand ready What's your favorite campaign mission customer I uh, Campaign mission I don't remember I don't remember my first playthrough of the game, like the first campaign. I only remember whatever I did recently. Like my first playthrough of campaign was 20 years ago. Don't have much memory of that. 
Hey Gorby, I'm new to Warcraft 3. I want to try playing against players. No more computers. Any strat I should try first? Yeah, look up my bloody beginner guides. I think that's going to be good. At least I stopped this mining. I don't have that much wood. At least we have an expansion. I should be scouting if they have one. Hey, thank you, Kyle S. How do you tell who's who? The health parts are so deceptive. I'm experienced. Kevin, thank you. I'm experienced at telling. Okay, he found a wisp. Mass meat wagons. I want to get disease cloud. Of course, I'm at... Oh, they don't have expo. I'm at risk against, like, uh, Chimera. But this guy has bears, and Khalid devastated this guy's base, so he doesn't have much for sure. I really want to get, um, what's it called, Orb of Corruption. It's a big challenge to like kill bears with meat wagons. It's kind of like Quake, where you have to do like rocket prediction. Any Quake fans? I think I'll just uh, TP towards him. Oh, you know what? I should get speed scroll. Speed scroll meat wagons. Hey, Jamie, what's up? Will you stream on both platforms or did you quit Twitch? I'm gonna stream on Twitch later today. So we're doing both today. That should be fun. Wait, 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 oh shh, Chimera. Wow, he insta-killed the Chimera, lol. Nice. I should make fiends with wet. Another crypt here, and a cigarette. Thanks, Agent Smith.
Hey, Kirby, are hi Hippo Riders any good? Oh, we'll play Hippo Riders next game. Victory hand, blue heart, folded hands. <laughs> folded hands. Speed scroll meat wagons. Help the chimera. I'll deny your head hunter. <laughs> I denied both headhunters. Here, he's gonna kill your shaman. I got, I got you. Meat wagon block? No, meat wagon prediction. Ah. Oh, by the way, meat wagons can kill Chimera. Just whip them first. Heal wave! Help! Help! Damn it. Do we have disease cloud yet? Yeah, we do. Kill the tree. Yes. All shall burn. We can kill this ulti if he's not moving it. I'm gonna get almost level six from it. Yep, there we go. Jeremy Reed, thanks dude, appreciate it. Help. Disease cloud at Chimera, nice. Oh, we have speech scroll here, good. Nice uh, aggressive voodoo launch. Very useful. Quick emergency necropolis. Nice. Here, go blade storm them next time they show. Love your content, keep it up. Cheers, dude. Kirby, are you a doctor in real life? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, they did a great job with the death sounds.
Where's Sky? Oh, Sky went home already. Did I miss last month's Twitch ban appeals? <laughs> oh shit. No, I haven't done them in a bit. <laughs> yeah, true. It's good content. Oh shit. Kill him! Kill him! Oh my god, he clicked Moonwell. Unlucky. Oh, let's get lightning orb. Not corruption, but lightning. I like it. Wait, what Twitch ban? Oh, like... Um, sometimes people get banned on Twitch. By me or whatever. And then they send in a request to be unbanned. And then I read those out and show them on stream. Which can be pretty funny sometimes but it can also be useful because sometimes people didn't deserve their ban and then later when i'm calmer i look at it again and i'm like yeah okay you know welcome back that kind of thing are you threatening me you're going for it The, the ulti is wrecking, but so is the so is the demon hunter. Oh, lightning or proc? Hell yeah, boy! Meanwhile, in another base. Yes. 2 Nice. I am an 83 year old billionaire with a hearty family of 14. Keep it up, Grubter. Mass wish to win. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Hey, Grubby, any divinity tonight? Probably, maybe, on Twitch. Hey, thank you, Romindus. Yeah, I'm playing with Sky soon. Sometime soon. Maybe in a, in a week or two. We'll do some online games together. That's cool. What did the demon do wrong? Uh, I'd say mostly they needed an expansion. They had pretty good cast efficiency in fights. And good army and stuff. They were not bad. But they didn't have an expansion. Rune 
Reforged graphics are runnable, but they're not very good. Guillaume Fur. Goed bezig. Kirby, you posted a video recently about defending against the Tower Rush, and it reminded me so much of a famous chess game where the martial attack was presented. You should look into that match. Oh, I don't really watch a lot of chess. I recently started playing 1v1 Bnet Ladder. It's been a blast. I managed to gain the courage to play again thanks to your bloody beginner guide. Would love more. Uh, I'm uploading a new uh, orc one soon. What's your favorite part of the Netherlands? Uh, I like the seasons, the changing weather. I don't love the most extreme cold, but I like that there is change. Change makes you aware of things. And being aware of things takes you out of autopilot. And when you are not on autopilot, you experience life more fully. So I, I like the, the seasons for that. And Netherlands is generally like um, quite a safe country. I think I can be very fortunate and happy about that. Safe, um, safe drinking water from the tap. At the moment, politically safe. I played this Farseer 6 Headhunter strategy and adapted slightly, but sometimes I struggle. I feel like I would appreciate videos that go a bit more in-depth on how to adapt to different races. Uh, I see. Uh, no, Sky went home already, uh, Jackel. We'll play some online games soon. Do you speak Dutch? Of course. Uh, <laughs> I am Dutch. <laughs> I was born here. I've always lived here. Well, I think English is now my best language, even though I grew up on Dutch. I still know how to speak Dutch. In fact, I spoke Dutch with my dad today earlier. Sometimes I have to search for some words. Is the overlay off by choice? Uh, what overlay? What is your point of view about the war in the center of Europe? I am against war, Roman Crit. I am against aggression between countries. I am against specifically aggressors, but I do not judge every countryman by the same stroke. I recognize that I am fortunate that I am born in the Netherlands and that we are not currently at war. And um, just because there are politicians and warmongers from a country that are doing war doesn't mean that everyone from that country supports it, even if they fear for their own safety if they speak out against it so i don't know what any other answer you would expect from me i like gamers i don't like warmongers like what can i say <laughs> uh i like it open like this luke waltman do you work out i do gardening extreme gardening Raking, I do chainsawing, axe cutting. <laughs> I have a home gym, but I don't use it because what's the point of doing a home gym when at the end of the day, I still need to mow the lawn and to carry wood and to mulch the wood. <laughs> I'm wasting calories in the gym when there's actual work to be done. What do you grow in your garden? Raspberries, zucchini, strawberries, cucumbers, uh, snap peas, beans, uh, pumpkins, watermelon, though they're failing, hot chili peppers, though they're kind of failing. <laughs> we're not self-sustaining, no. We're hoping to get chicken soon, which will help close the cycle a little bit. 
but we would need chickens and cows to be self-sustaining chickens cows sheep so far we only have worms and compost heaps and plants it's not self-sustaining yet no having chickens must be dope dude it's super dope we've had chickens before and the the sound of having chickens mind you the female chickens not the roosters they make some noise but they're not very noisy but the noise that they make is very soothing to our soul to most humans i would say they make a sound that goes a little bit something like this and then sometimes when uh, they've laid an egg they get excited they're like look what i've done and they're like kind of like that and that's about as loud as it'll get as well so it's not nothing crazy like a rooster that is like look at me look at me look at me all the time it goes like <laughs> uh, sometimes you'll take a rooster because they're more aggressive and they defend the female chickens and stuff uh, and the chickens feel safer and if you want to make little baby chickens not everyone knows this but it needs a male and a female chicken to have eggs uh, be fertilized and grow a little baby chicken female chickens will still lay an egg even without a male chicken around but it will be unfertilized and uh, not just the sound they make, like chickens, the way that they forage for food is uh, really cute. They do like uh, scratch it. So they're like this and then they're like, they scratch like that. And then they look and then they scratch or they scratch with their back legs. And it's really, really cute to see. I like all kinds of bird life and to see them like looking for grubs and stuff is uh, very healing for the soul but like i said we don't have chickens right now but hopefully we'll have enough time to get some next year back legs <laughs> wait chickens only have two legs <laughs> fair enough fair enough okay so i really didn't need to use all four of my appendixes i should be like this and then show my legs scratching yeah fair enough <laughs> what kind of four-legged chickens did you have? All right, man. All right, but I swear I had chickens. I know how they look like. I just forgot for a moment because, like, I was shy to perform in front of camera and everything. Okay? So, anyway, let's go tower rush some people. <laughs> no, I'm not leaving Twitch. I'm just streaming on both, Danny Brewy. Oh, shit, I'm still 2v2. Yo, what up, guys? It's Tower Rush time because today is a cheesy time. You know why it's a cheesy time? I opened a small carton of milk that was left out of the fridge and it smelled like cheese. So I thought, what a great opportunity. Let's go cheese in the game as well. Yeah, I threw it out, of course. That was uh, not good anymore. But look at this. Uh, I, I swear, I did not set this up. My teammate... <laughs> My teammate instantly left and the opponents think that they have a free win. Could you leave, please? That is so funny. <laughs> Drake Wyvern became a member. They, they think that uh, they're going to go for an easy win because it's 2v1. <laughs> Could you leave, please? waste of time okay all right i see how it is so legit this is a random ally that just left and now i'm forced to play alone you won't win what an idiot no real life <laughs> wow we have some uh, ceo gamers here some ceo gamers uh, they are so successful in real life that they need uh, to be as time efficient as possible they are uh, the bad boys of the internet. They are the kind of kids that your mother warned you not to play with because they're a bad influence. Yeah. These guys are hardcore badass mother truckers. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready for their worst. <laughs> they are so funny. Jesus. Ready to work. Ready to work. What is 
Try heart mode enabled. Yeah.
Job's done. What? Well, do you need my counsel? You need. Moved out. Onward and upward. My eyes are open. Forward. Look. Look. Yes, I know. Go, go, go. Show them WHO's boss.
<laughs> they can go back to being successful businessmen and CEOs. <laughs> what a joke. Wow. Boring. <laughs> Jesus, we did a good deed. Can you believe these guys? <sighs> like, get out, get out. We're too busy. We're too busy. No time to play you. Can you leave? <laughs> Man. I should message those guys that they should sub to the grub. And then we can play one on one with them sometime. Because if it was one on one, he totally would have won. <laughs> Thank you. <gasps> JM, Agent Smith. Thanks, guys. So where is he at for one on one? I don't know. He didn't set up contact. Maybe he wasn't that serious about it. Do you somehow adjust your playstyle when you have to control for two players? Yeah, I try to make simpler armies. And I group everything together. And I creep everywhere together, which is not optimal, but it's safer for me, so I don't have to like do two L fights in two L1 places. One would be even worse for him. We can imagine. D. Yeah. Imagine if you chase them too. I was gonna tower them, but. The moment they laid down the, the gloves, they laid down the hmm. smackdown. I had to try and play my best. Hi, YouTube. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait, we're already there. <gasps> Thanks, Truth in Numbers. The four mana heroes with Archmage was beautiful. Dude, it was so good. It was so useful. I did forget to use Heal Wave for a while. There was so much going on. I had to try and make my wind riders do a good job. The BMing helped you go into focus mode. Yeah. There's two ways you can coach me. If you're on my side, positive feedback. If you're on the other side, negative feedback. Those are the most encouraging. All right, let's uh, tower someone in one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> hey, thank you, Zach. Kexi Jaquise, appreciate it. It's so funny that, like, those two guys, I think they grouped up together. They both acted the same way. And then, once they lost, one guy tried to act like he didn't know the other guy. So embarrassing. He's like, this ally sucks, though, am I right? They're probably brothers or friends or something. Two peas in a pod. Because they were both BMing the same way. <laughs> and he's like, this guy, am I right? I would have totally had you if the game didn't put me up with this guy. Typical CEOs. <laughs> Typical CEOs. We have investigated ourselves for a wrongdoing and we found ourselves innocent. But we did find one secretary that was working out of order and revealed critical company information to the wrong instances. So we have fired them and we are now squeaky clean. There's no place for our bad deeds in our company. Ah, uh, CEOs, am I right? You said they were CEOs. One of them said he actually is lol. They definitely knew each other. Oh yeah, true. That's true. They were circle jerking each other until they lost. Blizzard, am I right? <laughs> Boring. <laughs> you know, I once... Um, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I once spoke with a sports psychologist to try and uh, 
edit my thinking about some things. First time on stream and best win ever. Hey, thank you, Kexi. Yeah, it was good. So I spoke with a sports psychologist and I was discussing various challenges and, and things about the game and stuff. And when I used the word boring, he said that the word boring, I don't know, like I don't 100% remember, but he was, he was like calling things boring is a childish thing to do. It was his opinion anyway. I think, wait, can adults not find things boring? What about meetings? <laughs> I don't think I actually agree with him on that. I mean, maybe... Maybe kids do that a lot, but like CEO of your local 7-Eleven checking in for <laughs> Thanks. Zipper, I appreciate it. No, I didn't speak with Dr. K with somebody else. I don't think only kids call things boring. I think adults can feel that way too. We sit the infantry low, we spell a little dota. Taxa miket pevap. One v one, I crush you, but two v two v one, I can't. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Do they have Seven Eleven in Europe? Uh, no, I think it's a, no. I, I don't think we have Seven Elevens, as far as I know. Help! Help! What's happening? My peasants are turning into militia. They're picking up arms. What's going on? I can't stop this. Please send help. -I What's going on? Was nice, GG. Am I cheesing? But I'm a respectable player. Meetings are boring. CEO here. <laughs> Found a CEO. Okay, all right. But uh, anyway, send help. I can't help. I can't stop sending peasants to his base. Not the frog! Not the frog! No, Kermit! All right, let's see how he deals with this. A boring tower rush. I can already tell you that his response is incorrect. The correct way to respond to a threat of this nature is not to go to the bomb shelter, but to cancel your barracks. You're to cancel your barracks and immediately make another burrow. That's the correct response against this. I'm sorry to say it because I think some of you are going to want to copy my build. I should have just uh, left well enough alone. But now I've said it and now you're going to see what happens when you don't do it. No one else available. What is it? Yes, my lord. What? Well, I didn't vote for you. We found, witch. We, burn her. we found a witch. May we burn her? So if we build a farm here, not only are we satisfying farm requirements, but we're also making sure that this hero cannot leave via that angle. So it gives us food and it gives him claustrophobia. Well, that's a bit too late now, isn't it? Oi. Oi, Guff. That's a bit late, isn't it? All right. He is killing the farm, but it also means that he's not gathering lumber right now. Okay, the farm is dead. We can hire a tavern hero. Because we need two farms. Yes, 
What do we hire? I'm gonna randomize. <laughs> Pandar and Brewmaster. No, we have to save the peasant. Block! Block! No! You seem a little parched. Have one on the house. Let's get masonry. Come on, peasants, you can do it. I am Napoleon. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Right on time. Hey, we needed exactly those amount of peasants. <laughs> oh. Let's surround him on the map. Man, Melon is such a cheesy mother trucker. This must be a little infuriating. It's not my goal to infuriate. My goal is to put a smile on people's faces. Sometimes some people's smile is another people's frown. What can you do? That's life. <laughs> How did I know to find him here? My pack, I guess. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, Game over, man. Now. How are you guys doing? Ready to work. If you put it like that, the Joker's not a villain. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense, I guess. <laughs> what do you, at what stage do you guys think this is this? What stage is this guy in the grieving process? Denial or acceptance? I feel like he's in acceptance and in fact in downright rebellion. Oh, he has no more vision. Until his peons come there. He has no vision. Unless he gets near, he has no vision. So this town hall will actually finish. <laughs> Disgust. <laughs> oh my god, this is too cruel. No, we're doing good deeds. Oh, I really hope it finishes. If it does, we can TP in. If it doesn't, we can't. Oh, he lost vision again. Good. Two arms, man! Two arms! <laughs> yes, me lord. I derive no pleasure from this. I'm just doing what needs to be done. Quit in three, two, one. Quit in three, two, one. <laughs> well, 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 well. We, it looks like we have time for another. It's okay to derive a little pleasure from this. Okay, let's derive it. Yeah. Yeah, I did have some pleasure from it. Your smile says the opposite. 
Ah, uh, it's tough to hide my true emotions. How did you come up with the name melon? Well, I like melons. It's a great fruit. Secondly, I had a, f uh, a rabbit that had the color of a honeydew melon. Like his skin was the same, his fur was the same color as honeydew melon. So I named the rabbit melon. I have a picture of him I can show you. Hold on. Uh, here it is. Wait, hold on. Let me uh, start this first. Let's send our peasants over so we can have a pleasant little tower rush. Okay, check it out. The reason my name is Melon, yeah? This rabbit has the... His fur is the color of uh, Honeydew Melon, yeah? The one in uh, the lighter color. Those are Bun Bun. His name was Melon, so this uh, name is a tribute to him because yeah, we loved our rabbits. Like, uh, like pets. Anyway, tower rushing. Uh, we're against the orc again. Perfect. We're getting the double, der the double derby. This map, uh, is, it's quite further away. So my peasants arrive quite late. Always wish GOHF seconds before you reach someone's base when you're cheesing them. That way they're busy typing when you're cheesing them. Uh, it's a big advantage. Okay, this guy actually has the right counter with the burrow. So we're gonna remake tower somewhere else and see if he migrates with us. This is the correct counter. We're not going to finish the tower because we want to see if he finishes the... Oh, very good. He's doing exactly the right play. He knows how to counter this stuff. If you want. Uh, looks like uh, we have to prepare for a future after the cheese. Now, there is, of course, the risk for him that he is over committing to the counter. That's the best thing I can hope for. It does seem like he's attacking the wrong tower, in my opinion. Oh damn, I don't have wood anymore. It's all about... Uh, trying to do as much worker damage as possible now. Because uh, we're not towering him anymore. But he has, he has now maybe committed quite hard uh, to defending to the point where maybe our transition will be, will be useful, will be good. So now we have to transition to something else, but I have to commend him on the d defense, but I think he overcommitted. He didn't know how to do like a gentle defense. So the first burrow was good, and the second burrow was good, but the third and the fourth were too much. So now while we're happily transitioning to the next thing, he's going to be stuck with a whole lot of burrows and no tech and no, uh, no grunts. Thank you. Oh. Never mind. He got his own. That's a lot of splitting. Level up. Nice. 
Whenever you have lava spawn splitting, you need to find the nearest thing possible and then try to farm it. But it's not going to be easy because they last so brief. They die so young. Let's see if we can get like the level 5 taskmaster with these. It doesn't matter if they die because at this point you're not going to get splits anymore anyway. You just want to get like any creeps possible. Oh, these can still split. This is my latest split. Not bad, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with the result. Boom. If I actually tank it, I can get more splits. Um, let's not die, though. A little bit low, but overall quite efficient. That one hero can take this whole orange camp is quite impressive. Just thanks to lava spawns. If we're lucky, we get one more split. No. Yeah, not close at all. Hey, Grubby, you inspired me to play Warcraft 3 a long time ago. I've been enjoying your A to Z series recently. Ah, the Dota A to Z. Nice. Why no Tinker? Yeah, Tinker and Fire Lord are both quite common after Tower Rush. Both is okay. So I want to actually use a... I want to use... A regen scroll, but I feel like it's a waste to just use it on myself. And I also feel like it's a waste to cast Lava Spawn when I'm almost 3. So let's tank with Militia, get that level up. And then regen scroll when it helps everybody. Uh. I'm going for siege engines now. His tech is very slow. There we go. Now we're healing properly. Yeah, he has very slow uh, tech. So hopefully... I mean, the biggest risk when you're going steam tanks is uh, mass raiders. So we have to be kind of aware of that. Meanwhile, we just creep the map with Fire Lord only. Guess we can creep our expansion as well. Get some stacking damage on the high priest. Kill him as fast as possible. Make him explode. Now, what units does he have? So far, not much. He might be towering. Shouldn't be tanking. Oh, so many lava spawns again. How lovely. One hero creeping, guys. It's insane. Can I get more splits? Most are dying. Soon we have another crystal ball. Then we can check if he has an expansion. Do summons give XP? Uh, you bet your ass they do. One of the best things about Warcraft 3 is that quote unquote free units like summons give XP. It's a comeback mechanic to give uh, an advantage to those that have to deal with summons. Because summons is like instant free army. That's a very dangerous mechanic to have in an RTS. Look at uh, Swarm Hosts and Brute Lords in StarCraft. They are essentially free units. And there's no uh, XP mechanic. Uh, in StarCraft. So, yeah, it ends up becoming kind of an issue. Where's Dog? He's right here. Dreaming. 
I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Once you've lost your army, it's hard to recover most of the time in Warcraft 3. Yeah, true. Except if uh, you've also killed all the army. Nice item. Check. Base check. Okay. He's just kind of doing his own thing, you know. Do you guys know what ye hu he hu ha ha means in, uh, in Warcraft language? It means we're gonna have fun. A random rat biter suddenly. Is he gonna repair or not? <laughs> he does have tiny great hole, he bought it right on time. Why do I have Scourge Bone Chimes? Maybe I can survive if I go here. save the tank is it worth the tp i don't know okay oh, oh this is gonna be good this is gonna be good he is going to make a tiny great hall somewhere yeah there it is i was i was thinking maybe i can interrupt it but no we can uh we can go for it again I don't have a lot of health on my rage pyre. What's happening? What's happening? Let's put the flying machine over here for some vision. Uh oh. Hide. Hide, 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 hide. 
There's wolves coming. We'll send our peasants back so that we don't run into him immediately. Because those wolves are not going to be there forever. Okay. He didn't see us. Rocket courier! Fast, we create distraction. <laughs> we did a good deed. GG. No, it's the same, Tao. Ah, if you enjoy a good, good old tier 0 tower rush into tier 3 siege tank attack, sub to the grub for more. Thanks for watching, GG. Hey, I think we just uh, reached our peak viewership ever on YouTube with 1600 concurrent viewers. I don't think it's ever been higher than that. That's cool. Requesting your presence helped. That's not bad at all. That's really nice. It's because I'm here. <laughs> Thanks, Matteo. I might or might not. We'll see, Chase. Might be a bit busy to fit it in as well. We'll see. First time viewer rediscovered your channel a few days ago. First time viewer rediscovered my channel. If I take that literally, it doesn't make sense. But I think what it means is you're a first time live stream viewer and you just found my channel. That's awesome. That's awesome. YouTube algorithm is working. Thanks. Truffle makes YouTube watchable. Yeah, if uh, if you guys aren't using it yet, should definitely try to use Truffle. Which... Do I not have a command for it anymore? Yeah, I do. Love your content. I watch every day with my new friend. Cool. I always thought Melon was because of Gandalf and Lothar. No, if it was because of Gandalf, it'd be with two L's, no? Gandalf, Lothar, Melon. Yeah, it's two L's. I wouldn't have mis miswritten it. Melon. Yeah, the Encyclopedia of Arda. The elvish word for friend was made famous by its use as the magical password to the dwarf city of Khazad Doom. Annon at Helen Edrohi Amen Fenas Nogothrim Lasto Beth Lamen And then he said Melon. That was one of the incantations he tried. Why do I mean orc? I like orc. I like Orc the most. And I think if you're gonna, if you're like gonna make a career out of playing RTS, which is a very not broad ambition. So I don't know if I'm speaking to an audience to whom it may concern, but if you're looking to make a career out of playing an RTS, you should always consider how many matchups do I like to play with this race? It's not just how the race functions, but do I like the matchups with my understanding of how the meta is going to shape out in that matchup? So let's say, right, you were going to play StarCraft 2 and you really like Zerk and you like Zerk against Protoss, but you don't like Zerk against Terran and you don't like Zerk against Zerk. Then there's no point maining Zerk because 66% of the time you're going to be against matchups you don't like. 
So for like for Night Elf, Night Elf Mirror, when I picked my race for the first time, Night Elf Mirror was either Demon Archers into Bears or it was Priestess Mass Hunts. And I found both kind of okay. So Elf was a valid race choice. And in fact, my first race ever was Elf. Then Human Mirror at the time when I was playing was both Fast Expand and make Knights and Mortar. Or it was like both don't Fast Expand Archmage MK or Archmage Pala Mass Caster. And I found it okay. And then in Frozen Throne, Human Mirror was like Mass Breakers, which I found really boring. And in, and then there's like Undead Mirror, which was Ghoul Gargoyle, which I didn't care very much for at all. Ghoul Gark Mirror. I didn't really like it. So I would never want to be Undead because I don't like that one matchup. And then when you look at Orc Mirror, Orc Mirror was like uh, Tower Rush versus Tower Rush, which I really liked. <laughs> Early ROC. Then it was like Wind Riders sometimes. Then you had mass Kodos, just like all Kodos, everyone Kodo, uh, which I thought was pretty funny too. Uh, and then there was like mass Grand Raider, which I also thought was a cool uh, matchup. And then eventually became Grand Raider Walker. And then much later, we even see Headhunters and some other builds. But uh, I've enjoyed all the Orc Mirror matchups. So I thought, okay, a lot of people hate Mirror in RTS. If I'm going to play a Mirror that I think is fun, in fact, one of the most fun matchups, that's a strength. And true enough, as I was playing Warcraft 3, I would have many people complain they hate Orc Mirror. And I think, okay, that's cool. I love Orc Mirror. And I let them know it as well, so that they know they're doing something they hate while they're playing against someone that loves it. PLS more sarcastic do you, French. Do you know the... Fuse. <laughs> Thanks, I'll try. Do you know the moral advantage you have? The morale advantage you have when you enjoy something and they don't and you let each other know of that fact? And then like Orc against Night Elf, Orc against Human, Orc against Undead. I thought all was pretty cool. So I play a matchup that gives me morale and motivational strength. And other people, they're like, oh yeah, I like Undead, but I hate these two matchups. I'm like, sucks for you, bro. My, my, yeah, in early Warcraft, it was mass Kodo, and then you would transition to Kodo Demolisher. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Because Kodos eat everything, but Demos kill the Kodo, and Kodo cannot eat Demo. But Kodos eat everything else. That was the build. You would go like six Kodo, four Demo. or uh, It was so stupid. I love it. And to celebrate it, I'll play it now. Not my problem, exactly. I was just telling people of the early Reign of Chaos meta of how Orc Mirror was played. And in fact, the reason why I play Orc. And I told people, because I'm live streaming YouTube right now and we'll probably use this video later as an upload. I told people I like Orc because I enjoy every single matchup that Orc plays, including Orc Mirror. Now the Reign of Chaos and in fact, mostly the Frozen Throne early game meta for Orc Mirror, it was so stupid. You would usually go Farseer Fast Deck into Fire Lord Second, and then you would mass Kodos. In those days, people's micro wasn't that good yet, and it was mostly about strategy and timings. So if you had a unit like a Kodo that could eat another unit, that was quite a big advantage because people dodge micro wasn't that good. So if you go grunts and the opponent goes Kodos, they're going to end up eating all your grunts with Kodos. And because Kodos have ranged, grunts are forced to come closer to the uh, Kodo in order to be able to interact with them and fight them. But then when they go for a bite to the Kodo, the grunts would have to dodge and they cannot. Headhunters weren't really used much in those days, which would be a more logical counter to Kodos because you can actually kite them, which means attacking, moving back and then attacking again. I'm going to show you a little lumber trick here, see? It's like the subway. Check this out. It's Tokyo subway. Look. Bam. Cheating movement. Anyway, uh, back to the story. So, uh, mass Kodos. And then, in order to deal with Kodos, eventually, you would start spamming catapults. Because catapults cannot be eaten. 
literally rocket science, right? And catapults deal bonus damage against uh, Kodos as well. So that was pretty cool. So in order to celebrate that old meta, I'm going to play Farseer Firelord with Kodo Demolisher now. Man, in the beginning it was Mass Shaman, not Mass Kodo. Yeah, in Reign of Chaos it was Mass Shaman. I'm talking about nice. early 2004 now. It was Farseer Firelord Kodo. So then you tag and then you're gonna make a barracks. You make like two grants. Two grants and then Fire Lord and then uh, Kodos. Yeah, I still stream on Twitch. I'm gonna stream on Twitch soon. On that note, if you don't mind me making a request for whenever in the future, a history lesson with Grubby, any other strategy? Zantetsu, thank you, dude. On that note, if you don't mind me making a request for whenever in the future, a history lesson with Grubby, any other strategy from the past meta, hearing you was about gonna ask for mass codos and you got ahead of me. <laughs> oh, I see. Thanks. So you're already getting what you asked for. Cheers, uh, Zantetsu. Appreciate it. So we need to harass as many wisps as possible because wisps are a counter to uh, Farseer Firelord. So anything we deal with now, any delay we do on this tech is going to help us a lot. What is that currency? I have no idea. CRC? 10,000 CRC is $18. I don't know that currency. CRC. Where's Sky? Oh, he's back home. Yeah, true, Remy, but uh, actually this is going to be like at least a week later. My eyes are open. Almost have fire alert. Hey, what's up? I'm here now. Hey, speaker. What took you so long, man? I requested your presence two hours ago. You would think it's like double bestiary, but generally it's it's not. Yes. <laughs> Funny story about that. He just detonated himself, right? And nothing of mine. This happened in 2003 and I wrote LOL because I always felt like it's it's fine to make fun of night elves because I didn't really like, well, I felt elf was OP. So it's fun. It's fine to like BM them. That was my mentality. I was 17. What can you say? So when they did something like detonate themselves, I, w I wrote LOL once. And I once did that to a guy from Greece. So when I went to a tournament in 2003, my first ever international tournament, there was this guy, his name was Seagal. Seagal was shorter than me. I'm 187, he's probably 165. But he was kind of built like one of those people from uh, Sparta. And he was naked. So back then, in those days, they would put up multiple gamers in one room without asking, without... And, and it was early days eSport. Nobody complained. You're just happy to be at the tournament. So I qualified for this tournament in uh, in France, in Poitiers. And they put four of us in the same room. So I had no idea what to expect. And I really don't mind, right? Like nowadays, if you put me with three other guys I don't know in a hotel room, I'm going to be like, no thanks, I'm going home. But in those days, like who cares, right? So I get to the room and there's already like two guys there and they're, they're on the bed and there's one bed completely like not used yet. So I figure that's mine. So I start like putting my back there and claiming the bed and stuff. And then uh, this guy comes out of the shower with just a towel wrapped around his uh, waist. And he's like, are you grubby? I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, 
You made fun of my friend when he detonated the wisp on his own demon hunter. And then he stood menacingly in front of me. And then suddenly he broke out in laughter. Like he wanted me to be scared for a bit. And then he was like, it's fine. And I actually remembered it because it was quite a highlight in my day that this guy detonated on himself. I thought it was so funny. <laughs> I still think it's funny. Uh, but then this was one of those moments where like you mess with someone online, but you're actually you're actually like a skinny dude. And then you get to the event and then people are going to throw hands, you know. But uh, he just wanted to make me sweat for a bit. Uh, so be careful who you piss off, right? So there's a trick. If you do shift D, 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 shift D, shift D, shift D, shift D, shift D, he will try to eat without you controlling it. Look, he's gonna eat, miss, and then he goes again. So that's a way where you can get like a lot of mileage out of a Kodo Beast. You just press D and then shift D, 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 and then you just... Actually, all you have to do is D and then shift D and then you just keep left clicking. That's it. You don't need to press shift or D again. So he's going to try eating that archer like a million times. So this was the build. Catapults and Kodos. You can see how it works. Especially... See, he's going to eat Chompa. And then you put your peons on auto repair. You just kind of start working on all their moon wells. Splotch. Where these peons came from? Yeah, I must have sent them a while ago. <laughs> Why wouldn't you be in a room with guys now? Well, I'm 37. I'm gonna go to an event. And without discussing with me, someone puts me up with three guys I don't know in a room and we're going to sleep together in one room with three other guys. I appreciate my privacy. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I have a creative imagination nowadays. When I was 17, I was like, I'm here to play games. I was innocent. You're 27 tops. Okay, okay, I'm 27. I'm 47, actually. Wait, the part about being naked was real? Yeah, he was naked underneath his clothing. But the only clothing he was wearing was a towel wrapped around his waist. Uh, around his waist. So I couldn't tell how he was sculpted everywhere. But I could see his upper body. Greetings to Benjamin Artus's friend, El Payo Shakore. <laughs> you were open to new experiences? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's not weird, right? Open to new experiences. Uh, that's normal. It was my first tournament. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever happens in Poitiers stays in Poitiers. Uh, what time is it now in your country? It is uh, it is currently 10.30 p.m. And the sun is just about down at 10.30 p.m. Isn't that insane? Cool game. That was uh, Kodo Demolisher. Thanks for watching. Sub to the grub. Of course, I'm still here. That was for the future recording. Oh, thank you so much, Darius Bowser. I appreciate it. Very generous. What is or would be your SC2 main? Would be? Shall we tell him? Let's tell him. He doesn't know, but he doesn't need to know, but we can tell him. 
Grubby is a professional PC gamer, Dutch. He's been competing in esports in the real-time strategy games Warcraft 3 and Warcraft 3 The Frozen Throne, as well as StarCraft Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm. Uh, where are my StarCraft? Hey, they don't cover my StarCraft achievements in here. Oh, it's because I'm on Liquipedia Warcraft. Lol. Grab you on three other wikis. There we go. This is, uh, this is me in StarCraft 2. Wow. Sorry about that, epileptics. I, re I really sorry that happened. Uh, I don't know how to avoid it, actually. Maybe an extension that stops it from going white. I think my best StarCraft performances was fourth place in ESWC 2011. I had a second place in IEM Singapore. Then I won an online tournament, the Alienware Arena Pro Amateur. And I got a third place at CPL in... Denmark. I also won my own tournament. <laughs> I organized the StarCraft series tournament and then I went to go play in it and won it like a Chad. So Grubby from Team Grubby won Grubby StarCraft 2 Series Pro Invitational number three. Casted sometimes by Grubby. That was uh that was something. Could you pronounce your last name? Sure. Schenkhuizen. Your overlay chat is filtering for top messages. I don't know. It doesn't work very well. It's super slow. I don't like how it works, but I don't know how to make it better. What? What? I gotta say the title worked on me very effectively. <laughs> okay. My final request to you guys is uh, to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. So you'll know when I'm next live. And I'll see you guys again the next YouTube stream. Which uh, you guys supported so big. I appreciate it so much. Let's make it not too long ago from now. I meant to stream more here. But like uh, it needs some setup. Like I need to improve chat and some other things. So it's, I'm always like, ah, oh, I should make it better first. And today, finally, I was like, who cares? Just go. Like, all these things, they don't matter. Let's just enjoy good games together. So, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Make sure to leave a like and comments and stuff and whatnot. I'll see you guys next. Now, I'm going to go stream on Twitch. So, if you want to see me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash grubby. Not follow grubby, just slash grubby. And I'll see you there. I'm going to start by playing some Dota 2. If it goes well. I'll keep playing, and if we have tougher games, or I feel like making a switch, we'll also play some Divinity Original Sin, which I've been playing loads, and you can follow all my content for that on my second YouTube channel, at Grubby Plays. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys. Always good to see you. Thank you for the support. I'll see you on Twitch. I'll be live there in a minute. Cheers.